Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through a short demo of how to use command line arguments in Java. To do this, I'm going to use the IntelliJ IDEA IDE, but you can use the command line in any text editor that you want in order to use command line arguments. I'll also show how to do this from command line so you can see both ways, but I just want to emphasize you don't need to use IntelliJ in order to follow along. All right. I'm going to make a new project. I will call this command line args fun. And I'm going to need a new uh, main.java file with a main method. All right. So First things first, we've seen this public static void main string args for quite some time, right? We're always typing it in order to get a Java program that we can run. We know that main is the main entry point to a Java program, and we've seen this string array args. We might have some idea about what that is. It's time to formalize that idea. So args is a string array, as you might guess, and it stores incoming arguments to our program. So just like a function can accept arguments and its definition has a parameter to store those arguments or one parameter per argument, the same thing here. When we execute our program, it's kind of like we're calling it and we can pass in arguments and those arguments will come into our main method and be stored as a string array in this parameter. We don't have a choice on this signature. All of our arguments are coming come into one string array, this one parameter we have a reference to. So there's two ways that I'm going to show you in this video in order to pass in arguments to your program when you run it so that they show up in this args parameter string array. So the first way is from command line. So recall when you run your program, the Java C compiler will take your source code and compile it down into Java bytecode, which is stored in .class files. And you can run a .class file that has your main method in it with the command Java, and then the name of that class file that has your main method. In this case, for me, it's going to be capital main, capital M main right here, because main contains the main method. All right, now this will run my program. And after this, I can put a space separated list of arguments. Like for example, let's say I wanna pass in hello, let's say the integer five and the double negative 2.345. I don't know, I'm just making up some values here. So these three arguments are gonna come in as a string stored as an element in the string array called args. And the second way to do this is via IntelliJ, or any common IDE would allow you to do this as well. And in order to do this, you're gonna go up to your menu bar, go to the run menu, click on edit configurations, and then go to program arguments and enter in your space separated list of values, just like you would from command line. I'll show you how to do this both ways. So let's print out args.length so we can see how this changes when we pass in arguments. If I run this program, I'm gonna see zero. Okay, now I'm gonna run this program again and I'm gonna pass in these three arguments. So I'm gonna do this from command line first. So head over to your terminal. You can use the terminal that is in a panel in IntelliJ. It's right down here or you can do it in an external terminal or an external command prompt. Okay, so if I do an ls, I'm gonna see there's an out folder. This is gonna store my .class files, the ones with the Java bytecode, and the source folder, as we know, contains, I'll expand it here, contains our .java files. So 
these files are compiled down into the dot class files that are in the out folder every time I run this in IntelliJ. So I'm going to CD into the out folder, CD into the production subfolder, and CD into the command line arguments subfolder. And I do an ls, and there's that main.class file. This is just the file hierarchy or the file structure that IntelliJ organizes its projects into. If I were to go uh, make, say, a new folder and cd into it, create main.java there, run java c, main.java, then main.class would be in the same folder as main.java. But IntelliJ separates them out into the source folders and into the out folders. All right, so here is main.class. Now I'm going to run this command I typed earlier. Java main. I run this and it says there's zero command line arguments, which makes sense. I haven't passed any in right here. Java main, and this time I'm going to pass in uh, argument zero as hello, argument one as the integer five, and argument two as the double negative 2.35. I press enter, and now this is three. Okay, that makes sense, one, two, three. Now let's head back to the code, and let's see if we can do something with these arguments. So if args.length is equal to three, then I know I can safely access args, the array, at index zero, one, or two. So let's do string word is assigned arg sub zero. Okay, this is already a string because args is an array of strings. And then int number is arg sub one, but note I'm gonna have an error here because arg sub one is a string. I'm trying to assign it to an integer. So I'm gonna have to use integer.parseInt and try and convert this into, uh, try and convert this string argument into an integer. This could fail, by the way. If it fails, it's gonna crash our program. So this isn't very robust code, but it serves an example for our command line arguments. Uh, next, let's do double, let's say, floating point number gets double, dot parse double, and we'll pass in arg sub two. And then I'll just print each one of these out. Okay, I'm gonna need to run this in IntelliJ in order to get these uh, this class file right here, main.class, to be updated for my new source code. So I'm gonna run it in IntelliJ first. Okay, it's saying zero command line arguments, which is correct because that run was invoked by IntelliJ of which we haven't gone in and edited the run configuration, but it did update that main.class file right here. So now I'm gonna run the same line again and there's our three for args.length and there we were able to properly parse our string, our int and our double, awesome. It's good practice to let the user know if they're using your program improperly, or even better yet, to preemptively let them know how to use your program. So I'm gonna put a little else in here, and if they don't pass in three arguments, I'm gonna let them know what I expect. This is pretty short here, I might wanna expand it in some ways, but this at least will work if I run this program in IntelliJ, it's gonna show me, hey, you're not using the program right. I expect you to pass in a string, an int, and a double. All right, so let's do that. We've already done command line, passing in command line arguments. Now let's do IntelliJ, passing in command line arguments. So I'm gonna head up to my menu up here, go to run edit configurations, Okay, we have one configuration because we've pressed this green play button and ran our main main method. So make sure that's selected. If you don't have one here, perhaps you haven't ran your code yet and you'll need to come over here and run it at least once. Okay, so under configuration, the third text field down, we see program arguments 
And this is where we really just put a space separated list of arguments to our program, just like we did at the command line. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, I'll use some different words. Let's do goodbye, pass in 42 the int, and 3.14 for the double. Hit okay. And now I'm gonna run this again. And this time we're gonna get three for args.length and we're gonna be able to parse our string and, and double. So this example here is not very representative of a real use case for command line arguments. So I will make one more note up here uh, about a great use case for command line arguments. Uh, so let's say that your program parses an input file and produces an output file. So you might have uh, two string command line arguments. The first for the input file name and the second for the output file name. But really you could see applications beyond simply input file names and output file names, right? Anytime you run a program that needs to be parameterized in some way, you could invoke that program using command line arguments as the parameters. Every time you use a command in the terminal, you're essentially passing in command line arguments. Uh, if you're gonna use something beyond simply the name of the command, like for example here, we're invoking the Java command and passing in a command line argument for the name of the class file that has the main method. Uh, anytime you use something like, uh, let's say, git commit dash m, and then some sort of uh, message or label. So git commit uh, or git is processing the commit argument to figure out what command to execute. And then dash m and initial commit, those are also command line arguments that's being parsed and processed by git. So these are all command line arguments here, right here for the git command. And here's the command line argument for the Java command. Uh, let's say you're gonna run a command like, let's say uh, copy destination source or move uh, destination and source, these file names here, these are also command line arguments. So you use them all the time, whether you realize you use them or not, I just like to provide like that copy example or that move example because that's the use case I gave here. But uh, here's one in action right here. All right, thanks for watching. Now you know two different ways to use command line arguments for your Java programs.